before him the demons run and flee at the mention of your name king of majesty there is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am is in this place right now. He wants to do miracle in lives and wants to touch bodies right now. I wonder if we could step out of our pew. If you have a need in your life, if you would step out of the pew and come to this front and lift your hands, that God is going to do a miracle in your life right now. Feel the Holy Ghost so strong in this place. If you have a need in your body, step out of your pew right now. Take a step of faith. Say, God, I need you today. The great I am is in this house. He's near. He's close to us today. The Bible says he's as close as the mention of his name. When you step into the front, just lift your hands and call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How do you are the great and mighty God? Though there is no one like you, Jesus. 
God is moving and touching needs and situations right now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and call on the name of the Lord. The King of Kings is in the house to touch every need. Hallelujah. We speak the name of Jesus over every need. We speak the name of Jesus for Tanya and Michelle today. Need a touch in their body. Kayla Callahan and Nancy. Margo Bartlett, Brother Holman, hallelujah, yes, pray that God would touch my mother-in-law in the name of Jesus, that God would touch Sister Hanks today, hallelujah, he wants to touch your need right now. we worship that name all over this house let's worship him for how great he is let's praise the name of Jesus for the needs and the lives that were touched right now oh he's worthy of all of our praise we sing about being close that we want to be close to where he is can I tell you he is here today we don't need to go anywhere to get closer to him. He is in this house today. And as we mentioned, the Bible says he's as close as the mention of his name. So I wonder if one more time we can lift our hands and just call on the name of Jesus. Just worship the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Oh, that's it. He inhabits the praises of his people. When we begin to call on his name, when we lift up his name, he can't help but take notice that his people is reaching out, that his people is praising him and calling on his name. It gets the attention of God. Hallelujah. Oh, someone clap your hands into the Lord and thank him. Hallelujah. Clap your hands as you return to your seats. Feel so good in the presence of the Lord today. So thankful that I'm here in the house of the Lord. No other place I'd rather be. To all of our guests, we welcome you to Phoenix Revival Center this morning. Can we give all of our guests a welcome? Thank you for being with us this morning. Just a few quick announcements. Let's remember today at 2 o'clock. Everyone say 2 o'clock. That's when it starts. If you're bringing something, you need to be there earlier than that. That way we're ready to go at 2 o'clock and not still setting things out as people bring in food. So please bring a side and a dessert with you to our afternoon of thanks and surprise at Turning Point Freedom Traditional Academy. If you need the address to that, 
um, please reach out to one of us. We can get you to add. It's going to be an incredible time of fellowship, connecting with others, and, of course, food. It's going to be a good time together this afternoon. This week, due to Thanksgiving, because of that, no service this week. Um, spend your um, after, after the afternoon of thanks, of course. There will be no service Wednesday night. Spend the time with your family. I know there will be many traveling, um, praying safe travels, and that everyone has an awesome Thanksgiving. December 16th and 17th is Dwell Men's Retreat at Apache Junction. This is a, 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 a retreat around uh, men. It's going to be an incredible time there. It's at Pastor um, Strader's Church in Apache Junction. Pastor, our pastor will, be, uh, pastor will be speaking there. Let's come out, all of our men, all of the men here. Let's go out and support our pastor. Let's go out and be poured into. It's going to be an incredible time. Pastor would love as many of our men here that can attend Let's be there. Let's be there, and let's, let's receive what God has for us. It's going to be an incredible time that weekend. Mark your calendars, December 16th and 17th. And praise the Lord, everybody. Aren't you glad you're in church today? I want to say a great big thank you to everyone that was here early for prayer. What a wonderful time of prayer. Thank you for ushering us into the presence of the Lord. To those that slipped in right at 10 o'clock or afterwards, you owe the rest of the church a great big thank you for preparing an environment of prayer for yourself today. Give them a hand clap of appreciation. And I want to encourage everyone, prayers at 9.30 on Sunday mornings. Yes, amen. Prayers at 9.30 on Sunday mornings. Don't frustrate your pastor. You're cheating yourself of the blessings and the touch of God. Prepare your heart for the things of God. Sunday school staff, get your stuff ready before so you're here at 9.30 for prayer. And let the church say amen. I want to go over just a few things with you real quick. Uh, beginning on Sunday, December the 4th, I believe that is the date. I left those notes upstairs, but I believe it's Sunday, December the 4th, is the new initiation of the new schedule around here that we started, uh, that we mentioned the last Sunday night in our time of prayer, with us taking on the work and surprise. We're adjusting things here to accommodate all of that. So next Sunday, or not next Sunday, Two weeks from today, Sunday, December the 4th, Sunday school, Kidtricity Sunday school. You want your kids in Sunday school? It will begin at 9.30 a.m., 9.30 a.m. to 10.15 a.m., 9.30 to 10.15, be here about 9.25 to get them checked into Sunday school. During that time, if you're not involved in music team from 9.30 to 10, there'll be coffee and refreshments that you can connect with your church family. There's nothing better than hanging out with your church family. Amen. If you think coffee's good, you ought to try it with your church family. It takes it to a whole nother level. Amen. And then from 10 to 10.30, everyone say 10 o'clock. 10, 10 to 10.30 is church prayer in here, and I know you all will be here, especially after my comments a few moments ago. Thank you very much. My poll numbers are dropping, but I'm, I'm pushing towards revival, and that's all right. And I want you to go with me. So 10 to 10.30 will be prayer, and then 10.30, service will start right here in the auditorium. All our kids will be in here with us. It's important that families worship God together. Amen? Amen. I want to say a great big thank you to Brother Danny, Brother Jimmy, Brother Simon, and the rest of those, Brother John was down here yesterday. I know I'm probably missing some that have been here the last two weeks filling up the roll-off bin. And that thing is maxed out. Please don't put anything else in that till we get it dumped so we don't get overcharged on it. We want to get it dumped, and we're going to fill it up again. What are you doing? We're preparing room for revival. Amen. And so I can't thank you enough for all of your assistance. Thaddeus was there as well. And so thank you, thank you. Brother Connor has been working diligently getting metal folding chairs. Man, those are vintage metal folding chairs. And remember the long wooden tables that weighed a million pounds that have been on our storage forever getting those sold. We're sitting at close to $500 raised from that. That will be used to buy more black lifetime chairs for this church. So thank God we're making room for revival. Amen. I'm also very excited about what is going on with Bible quizzing. Where's Sister Connor at? There you are, talking behind my back. Amen. Sister Connor, bring your quizzers up. Show us what's going on with Bible quizzing today. Come on up here, guys. So we have been meeting every Wednesday, almost every Wednesday, with practice. And these guys have been studying very hard, and I'm very proud of them. 
And they're going to quote some verses for you guys today. And I'm not checking you. So if you guys get it wrong, that's on you. Because I don't have my Bible up here. I don't have my phone. I know you guys know it. So let's go with Thaddeus. I think you're quoting from chapter 1 of Ephesians. Is that correct? All right. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him. Cease not to give thanks for making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Amen. That was good job, bud. That was Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10, verse 16, and verse 17, right? All right, Ethan, verse chapter 2. For you hath he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Amen. Awesome. Good job, guys. Good job. That was chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And we're... I'm really excited for our first tournament. These guys are going to kill it. Good job, guys. Is the coach going to quote as well? Next time. Next time. Thank you. Give our Bible quizzers a hand. I so appreciate the investment of the Word of God into them. Brother and Sister Connor, thank you for pouring into them. Parents, thank you for staying on top of them. I believe in what they are doing. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? We're going to give you an opportunity to worship the Lord. Actually, we're going to give you an opportunity to be blessed by God. Because as we give of our resources unto God, our tithes and our offering, He opens up the windows of heaven and pours it out on us over and over and over again. Before we come give, I want us to lift our hands and give God thanks for His abundant blessings today. Father, I thank You for Your abundant blessings. You have never failed one time, nor will You ever fail on the promises of your word. You have met our every need abundantly, God, and we give you praise and glory. I thank you for the faithfulness of this church family, and we bless you and we worship you. Take this tithe and this offering for the glory of your name and the glory of your kingdom, and we give you praise. I God, I'm all God, I'm my God. There's a touch of the Holy Ghost right now. You ought to go ahead and rejoice a little bit. Because my God, my God shall supply all your needs. When I give to him, I don't have to worry. He shall supply my every need. Give him a hand cup of praise in this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, let's come and give unto the Lord. Greet one another. You can text to give. Uh, you can give in the pants. You can give electronically. Uh, if you weren't planning on giving today, I would give just from what I feel in this house right now.
miracle can happen. A miracle can happen in this place. A miracle can happen. A miracle can happen. A miracle can happen in this place. A miracle can happen. A miracle can happen. A miracle can happen in this place. A miracle can happen. A miracle can happen. A miracle can happen in this place. A miracle can happen. A miracle can happen. Can happen in this place. A miracle can happen. A miracle can happen. A miracle can happen in this place. With Jesus, it will happen. With Jesus, it will happen. have already happened in this place today. Brother Connor, step forward for prayer with terrible knee situation. The pain is gone and the crutches are underneath the pew. With Jesus, it happened. You didn't get it. I said a miracle just happened in this house. And if God did it for Brother Connor, he'll do it for every one of you. He has no respecter of persons in this house. This is the environment for miracles today. Oh, you ought to lift your voice and give him praise all over this house. You have not because you expect it not. You have not because you're, you've resigned yourself to live with it. But is anyone tired of it? Is anyone got enough faith to say, God, I'm ready for you to heal me? All over this house, would you lift your voice and give the greatest shout of praise you've given to God all day. Hallelujah. 
It ought to sound like a war cry in here. Man, I am so ready to preach. I hope you're ready to preach with Pastor today. That's okay. About halfway through, you'll get it. You'll be ready to preach with Pastor. We're, we're flowing in the Holy Ghost today, if that's all right. Some of you came in with no expectancy at all, and you're going to leave here with nothing at all because you came in not expecting. But if you come in with expectancy and hunger and you reach out to God... I'm here to tell you, uh, this is the environment for miracles today. This is the environment for deliverance today. Uh, yeah. and, you, and you're content to just come and say, uh, I'm going to hear a little sermon and go home and everything's going to be the same. It doesn't have to stay the same. Uh, it can change today uh, by the power of the name of Jesus. Uh, if you believe it, would you shout to God all over this house? Turning your Bibles to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. While you're turning there, please be in attendance at the afternoon of thanks today. It's going to be a great time as we share our meal together in surprise with our church family there. We'll start at 2 o'clock, try to be there around 1.30 so we can have food out, bring a side and a dessert. Everything else will be provided, including drinks. And it's going to be a wonderful time of fellowship with that church family. God is doing incredible things in the church and surprise, and I thank God for that. And I also thank God for the team that's helping to make it happen. Amen, amen. John chapter 11. I'm going to hop around throughout this chapter. Verse number 1. A certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment, wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Verse number 6. When Jesus heard thereof that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. He didn't leave. He stayed right where he was at. Verse number 11. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them. He's talking to his disciples now. Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go into him. Look at the response of Thomas. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Boy, you talk about expectancy. Let us also go that we may die with him. Verse 17. When Jesus came, he found that he'd lain in the grave four days. All right, everyone say four days. Verse 20. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. Jesus said to her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Verse 38. Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinks. He's been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Verse 43. 
And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. I'll tell you what happened this week. I was in prayer time in my office, and I could feel, I felt a heavy weight upon me, and I had to do what David did. David encouraged himself from the Lord. And so you know what Pastor did? I went back through archived some messages about faith and the power of God. And I read those, and I encouraged myself. And this was one of them. And I felt the Lord press it into my spirit for this morning. Typically, when I'm feeling a weight like that, it's not just pastor, but I'm feeling the weight of this congregation as well, facing that stuff. And so I want to tell somebody, you're in the environment for a miracle today. And the reason you don't feel it is the title of my message, Obstacles to Your Miracle. Now, I'm not here to praise the obstacle. I'm here by the power of the Word of God, by the power of the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost. We're going to obliterate every obstacle between you and your miracle. I'm not stopping until we blast through every obstacle to your miracle today uh, and you receive the touch of God uh, would you lift your hands uh, and give God praise Uh, the mountain shall be cast down Uh, the water shall be parted Uh, everything between you and your touch from God uh, is coming down uh, in the name uh, of uh, Jesus Uh, I bless you and I praise you and I worship you God Uh, anoint me to speak what only you would have me to say Uh, nothing more nothing Nothing less. Help me to communicate faith from the Word of God that your glory may be revealed, that your name would be magnified in the name of Jesus. Would you give him a great shout of praise in this house right now? And you may be seated. Before I can preach from John chapter 11 today, I am tasked with convincing you that God desires to bless you. We've got to understand, it's not a stingy God. It's not a God that rations it out. But it's just in His very nature of who He is to bless His children. It's in the nature... It's in the nature of God to heal those that are sick. It's the very reason he robed himself in flesh to deliver those that are bound. And the very reason he came is to seek and to save that which was lost. You walked in here with a need today, but I'm here to tell you God is in this house with a desire greater than your need to fill it, to bless it, to heal it. To, to deliver you to provide abundantly for you to deliver you from every lifestyle that's going to keep you from heaven I'm here to tell you that's what God wants you to wants to do for you today he's not here to pat you on the back he's here to set you free he's here to heal you he's here to deliver you that's the God I'm talking about today You simply read 12 chapters into Genesis uh, and you find the first mention of God uh, promising a blessing. uh, And it's on a man by the name of Abraham specifically. uh, And God says, I'm going to bless you. uh, I'm going to make your name great. uh, Out of these shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Uh, Why? Because he's a God uh, that loves uh, to bless uh, his people. As he walked upon this earth, he posed the rhetorical question to prove a point in Luke chapter 11. If a man, if a son asks dad for bread, he's not going to give him a stone. If he asks his dad for a fish, he will not be given a serpent. If he asks an egg, he's not going to be given a scorpion. And he said, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your kids, how much more? 
how? I know we're going into the holiday season. You're saving your money to bless your kids and your grandkids. But how much more? I'm blessed with the world's greatest dad, but how much more? I'm here today. I'm not depressed by what I need in my life. I am encouraged in my faith by a father who says, how much more shall I give good gifts to my children? God is not standing by day desiring to withhold his blessing from his children, but he delights in blessing and providing for his children. I don't care how many times you prayed and it was not answered. He still desires to bless. He still desires to heal. He still desires to set you free. You need to get rid of the victim mentality and say no, no, no. That's not who I am. I have a God in heaven and he's got all abundance. He's got every resource and he's ready to bless me. He's ready to heal me. He's ready to deliver me. If you believe it, you ought to shout to the Lord right now. We gain a glimpse at God's commitment to blessing his children with his comments to David. When David's sin of adultery and murder had been found out, God responded in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 7 and 8, through the prophet Nathan to David. God says, David, I anointed you king over Israel. I delivered you from the hand of Saul. And I gave you your master's house and wives into your bosom. And I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I made you king. I delivered you from your enemy. I gave you families. I made you over Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have given you such and such things. In other words, God says, I'm so interested in you living for me. I'll bless you with whatever I have to bless you with to ensure that you are saved. That does not sound like a stingy God to me. It does not sound like a God of rationing. It does not sound like a frugal God. It sounds like a God who is standing there rubbing his hands together saying, oh, I wonder what I can do for the felties. I wonder what I can do for the cotters. I wonder what I can bless my kids with. James reiterates every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights in whom is no variableness, no shadow of turning. If he's ever blessed you, he'll bless you again. If he's ever saved you, he'll save you again. If he's ever healed you, he'll heal you again because there's no changing in God. Hey, I want to tell somebody today, look at your neighbor and say today. Today would be a great day for your blessing. Today would be a great day to walk out of here healed in your body. Brother Connor, it already happened. Did they sing it just right? No. There's a God that says, I'm responding to the faith of my son, and I love to heal. Today would be a great day for your miracle. Someone give him praise today. We must understand that Satan recognizes this principle more than we do. Oh, yeah. In fact, I believe God, but I believe that Satan believes in the ability of God to bless more than his children do. That's why he works so diligently to place obstacles between you and your miracle as you're pursuing the blessing of God. And we come in and resign ourselves to the fact that it's not going to happen today. No pursuit of the blessing of God. And that's where some of us were today. We came in, it's like, well, it's a Sunday thing. I'm going to do the Sunday thing with no expectancy. No thought that, hey, today may be the day. And while we strive to just maintain, uh, Satan is actively working to place obstacles in the path uh, to your miracle because he understands how much God desires to bless you. 
I'm hitting road bumps right now. Uh, yes, Satan will put obstacles there. Uh, in Daniel chapter 10, uh, Daniel had prayed and waited 21 days. Uh, and finally the answer came. Uh, and the word came, Daniel, uh, your prayer was heard on day one. Uh, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia did withstand me. Uh, you know what? You know what it's been? Uh, I've been praying for six months. Uh, I've been praying for a year. Uh, your miracle is there. Uh, but there's a prince of Persia. There's a spiritual force uh, trying to keep you uh, from the miracle, uh, trying to keep you from the blessing, uh, trying to keep you from the provision. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, uh, it will not prevail uh, against the things of God. Uh, it's t- there is nothing greater than my God. I'm here to tell you the obstacle is coming down today in the name of Jesus. Oh, would you lift your hands and give him praise right now? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I got a whole lot more to preach, but I think I'm almost done. I said, I think I'm almost done. I feel in my spirit I've got one more point to hit, and then there's going to be an outpouring of blessing. There's going to be an outpouring of miracles. So you need to get your faith in place. You need to get doubt out the door. You need to get worry out the door. You need to throw logic aside and say, my faith is in you, oh God. You desire to bless, and I'm ready for you to bless me yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord if you're ready for a blessing from God if you're ready for a healing in your body you ought to throw your head towards heaven and just start out start shouting out yes Lord yes Lord I believe would you help my unbelief would you help my unbelief today I believe you can touch depression I believe you can touch anxiety I believe you can touch every disease and my body. Yes, Lord. I believe you own the cattle on a thousand hills. And I've been faithful to you in tithes and offering. And you shall supply my every need according to your riches and glory. I don't have to worry about you withholding, God. You're going to meet my every need. I believe it. Oh, someone ought to go ahead and rejoice over the promises of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I haven't seen the promise fulfilled. Would someone get the spirit of the wise men on them when they saw the star over the baby? There was just a hint of a promise. But they rejoiced with exceeding great choice. You say, all I see is a hint of a promise. You ought to go ahead and rejoice. You're on the journey to the fulfillment of it today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My family shall be saved. My bank account shall be filled to every need that I have. My path of life shall be ordered of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen to pastor for just a moment. And I think this is probably where we'll end up landing today unless I'm totally off. The first obstacle Jesus encountered on the path to Lazarus' resurrection was that of dashed expectations. Say dashed expectations. Jesus said to the disciples, let's go to Judea again. The disciples weren't too crazy about going to Judea. They said, Jesus, you're having a senior moment. And that is possible since he's been here since before time. Last time we went there, Jesus, they wanted to stone us. And that wasn't recreational marijuana. That was rocks in their hands to take them out. Jesus, you want to go to Judea? Last time we were there, they wanted to kill us. And you want to go back? And Jesus said, Lazarus is dead. We're going back. 
Man, you need to catch that. It was a threatening environment, but Jesus so desired to bless his friends. He said, I'll go into a threatening environment to bless my people. I don't care how dark it looks. I don't care how drag it is. I don't care how threatening the environment is. I don't care how many negative medical reports and family tensions there are. Jesus says, I want to go to your Judea. I don't care if they tried to kill me before I'm greater than that if they kill me I'll get back up Jesus is not afraid of your threatening environment disciples had dashed expectations we've been there before and it wasn't a good day Jesus and Thomas we all call him doubting Thomas but I think we all identify with Thomas Thomas was a sarcastic one I love Thomas He responded, okay, let us go also that we may die with him. Can I order flowers for my funeral, first of all, Jesus? Because Thomas and the disciples had received foul treatment in Judea before, they were expecting the same this time. It's amazing how bad experiences have a way of dashing our expectations. If nothing good happened last Sunday, it's not going to happen this Sunday. You're looking at it through the prism of time, and time means nothing to God. I've been prayed for before, and nothing happened. It's nothing's going to change. It is what it is. I've been through prayer and fasting. Nothing changed. Just keep praying. Just keep fasting. I worship for the victory and nothing came. You may have only been on day six. You were one day away from day seven. Go ahead and worship and spin around one more time until the walls come falling down. My beautiful bride almost didn't get in a prayer line about her back because she'd been prayed for before in prayer lines and nothing changed. But she got in one more time and something happened. A fire from heaven touched and snapped that spine into place. She could have been held hostage by dashed expectations. But she said, no, I've got a God that likes to bless. I've got a God that likes to heal. So the disciples said, let's go to G-. Jesus. said, let's go to Judea. They said, they wanted to kill us. Thomas said, let's go that we may die also. And look at Jesus' response to them. There was no response from Jesus telling us that we need to ignore dashed expectations. I've been prayed for before in this situation. Nothing happened. So, let the rede- I know it's out of context, but it works right now. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. My victory didn't come last Sunday. So, my marriage didn't get better. So, I didn't get my healing, so I'm going to go ahead and praise the Lord anyways. I will not be held hostage by my dashed expectations. Jesus ignored and went on to Lazarus' grave. I've come to preach to PRC today just because you have a track record of failure to see the miracle. It will not stop Jesus. You need to put the hand up to the dashed expectations and say, no, it just wasn't God's time. But today may be the day. In fact, I believe today was the day. Today was the day. You could have sat right there and said, my knees feeling better but I wanted to stay that way but faith sprung up in him and he said I know they prayed last Sunday but today may be the day I'm going to walk down and as he did the power of God touched him and healed him I'm here to tell you every one of us probably has dashed expectations but it does not mean it will not happen today would you give God praise Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift your hands and bless the Lord right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But I, I want to 
I want to take a side note right now, and I'm going to. When I really stop and look back at the track record of my God and my prayers and the blessings of God, I have a whole lot more exceeded expectations than I do of dashed expectations. It's the human nature uh, to remember every negative uh, every time it didn't come through on time. Uh, and when we say it didn't come through on time, uh, mainly what we really mean uh, is it did not happen on my time frame, uh, but it did happen on God's time frame uh, right on time. Uh, in fact, I look back over my life. Uh, I can't think of one uh, dashed expectation uh, that was in the will of God. Uh, I can't think of one time uh, I prayed and it did not answer uh, according to his will. I can't think of one time I needed a blessing and he did not bless me. I can't think of one time I was weak and he did not give me strength. I can't think of one time I had financial need and he did not provide abundantly in that financial need. And so I have no dashed expectations with God. In fact, I don't even have fulfilled expectations with God because that would mean he met me at my limit but that's not the God I serve he does exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us I'm done preaching right now those will wait I'm here to tell you there are no dashed expectations in God he always goes above and beyond and so if you were prayed for last week and nothing happened you ought to come down and worship God because today may be the day today may be the day I have no failure in God I find no fault in him I find no failure in him all I find is a God who exceedingly keeps his promises a God who doesn't just fulfill his promises he's an over the top kind of God I have no dashed expectations but I've got faith because when I look back over my life I should not be here. This church should not be here. I shouldn't be this blessed. Her spine shouldn't be straight. He should be on his way to hell right now. But he did not just meet him. He exceeded him. There are no dashed expectations in God. He's been better than good. He's been better than good. And so because I have no dashed expectations, I look over this crowd right now and I say miracles, signs, wonders, Next week, no, miracles, signs, and wonders in January after we pray and fast. No, I say miracles, signs, and wonders all over this place. I see the financial blessing of God all over this church. I see people being filled with the Holy Ghost all over this church. I see people being delivered from every debauched lifestyle all over this church. Miracles, signs, and wonders. I have no dashed expectations. I only have praise to God for his goodness, for his mercy, for his abundant blessings. You ought to go ahead and give God 30 seconds of praise right now. Miracles, signs, wonders all over my life. It's miracles, signs, wonders all over my life. It's miracles. Signs, wonders all over my life. It's miracle. Signs, wonders. Oh, it's miracles. Signs, wonders all over my life. All over my life. Open all over up. my life. Open your mouth up and give God all praise. And as you do, the God all of blessing is going to meet you. Today's the day. The God of blessings going to meet you. All over my life, miracles, signs, wonders. All over my life, it's a miracle. Signs, wonders. All over my life, it's miracles. Signs, wonders. Oh, it's miracles. Signs, wonders. All over my life, it's miracles, signs, wonders, 
All over my life, 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 all over my life. All over my life, it's getting ready to happen. Oh, it's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. Oh, it's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. Yes, it's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. Oh, it's Oh, it's getting ready to happen. Yes, it's getting ready to happen. Oh, it's already happened. Oh, it's already happened. Yes, it's already happened. It's already happened. Yes, it's already happened. Oh, it's already happened. It's already happened. Oh, it's already happened. 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 Oh, miracles, signs, wonders all over my life. Miracles, signs, wonders. Oh, over my life with miracles, signs, wonders, all over my life. Miracles, signs, wonders, oh, all over my life, all over my life, all over my life, all over my life. Listen to Pastor for a moment. Uh, once they ignored and pushed past dashed expectations, uh, they get to the grave of Lazarus. Uh, and once you get past dashed expectations, uh, you'll hear the voice of Jesus say, Lazarus, uh, come forth. Uh, and when he says that, uh, you have no choice but to get up uh, and come forth. Uh, you push past your dashed expectations. Uh, you step to this altar. Uh, now you need to open your mouth. Uh, Jesus is saying, come forth out of the hole uh, of depression. Uh, come forth out of the hole uh, of dashed expectations. Uh, come forth out of the hole uh, of condemnation. Uh, and open your mouth and begin to give God praise with your head pointed towards heaven I would do it as loud as I could I love you Jesus I believe you God and I promise you there's going to be a resurrection there's going to be a deliverance it's getting ready to happen it's getting ready to happen it's getting ready to happen oh, open your mouth ready to happen. yes it's getting ready to happen Oh, it's getting ready to happen. Yes, it's getting ready to happen. Oh, it's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. Oh, it's already happened. Yes, it's already happened. 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 It's already
shout, yes, Lord. Open your mouth and shout, yes, Lord. Oh, open your mouth and shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Open your mouth and shout, yes, Lord. Open your mouth and shout, yes, Lord. Open your mouth and shout, yes, Lord. 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 It's happening for individuals right now. I don't think I would stop. I'd push on through until I got that special touch of strength. It's happening all over this room right now. Come on, PRC. Don't check out right now. Don't check out and say, oh, I've done my Sunday duty. No, you do your Sunday duty and never get what you need from God. I'm getting what I need. I'm not letting the obstacles stand in my way. In the name of Jesus, special strength, deliverance right now. Ah, cover every mind in this house, God. come forth. Lazarus come forth. It's happening right now. There's resurrection power. God's calling you out of a life dead in trespasses and sin to walk in newness of life.
answer may not have come yet. But why don't you praise the Lord in advance of the answer right now? And I believe it's going to break down some strongholds in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord like the answer just happened. Praise the Lord like the miracle just occurred. Yes! Praise the Lord like your loved ones just prayed through. When you do that, the Lord's going to send some ambushments. stood at that grave and said Lazarus come forth after the stone had been rolled away that's another obstacle the excuse of the stone we won't go on to that when he said Lazarus come forth the people on the outside of the tomb all they could smell was the stink of the tomb they couldn't see what was going on They could not see what was going on inside the tomb. And you're saying nothing's changed right now. All I can do is is smell the stink of the mess I'm in. But you don't know what's going on in the deep parts. You don't know what's going on in the spirit realm. And I promise you, there is stuff happening in the spirit realm right now. And so just keep looking at the grave. Lazarus is fixing to come out. And when he does, you better be ready to take the grave clothes off and let the men miracle loose so go ahead it's already happening in the grave it's happening in the spirit realm right now so go ahead and rejoice at the grave of your miracle right now you I wish we could see what was going on in the spirit right now there's incredible things going on in the spirit right now there's angels being dispatched there's virtue flowing there's deliverance going all throughout the city Ah, all you see is a grave you don't know what's going on inside the grave but I promise you the power of God is at work in the grave so rejoice at the grave of your miracle
You ought to sing it out all over this house. Look at your grave right now. All the things done for all the things. No dashed expectations. For all the things he's done. For all the things he's done. Oh, for all the things he's done. Yes, for all the things he's done. Oh, for all the things he's done. Oh, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. ago this church was asked to pray for me I was having pains in my chest area the doctors told me they didn't know what it was they just tell me I'll take this medication it'll be fine I was praying for the pain went away but not before just Jessica told me God knows the doctors don't know but God knows I was prayed for it was taken care of I've been recently prayed for again because my blood pressure keeps going up Pastor prayed for me. It has been stable. I have to give God glory. Oh, I'm not done. I was worried at work. There were situations going on. It didn't help my blood pressure any. I was worried about my job. On Monday, I found out I'm getting a raise. And on Friday, I'm getting an additional raise on top of that. So I am giving God glory. Find a brother or find a sister and rejoice together. We're rejoicing over a God's going to heal Sister Lavis. She ran around all by herself, but we rejoice with those that rejoice. And we weep with those that rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We ought to rejoice twice as much as we weep. Find a sister and rejoice with them right now. Sister Kiva gets Sister Cleveland. Sister Lori and my wife. Everybody find somebody. Rejoice together in the Lord. 